Over the past year, I've received a few requests from you moms um, asking for advice um, because you, you ask, you ask like, how do I find time to work on my blog and on my different projects? Um, and uh, I, spend, I spend at least three hours a day basically totally, just totally focusing on my projects, on my writing, on these pep talks, on different, my different creative things I do for my blog. Um, and, um, uh, and so the truth is, like, so, so I've received this request several times, and every time I write back and say, and say, great, that's a great idea. But I know that I'm not going, to, but, I, but I sort of thought, like, I'm not actually going to answer that question because I was a bit embarrassed. Because I knew that these women who were asking me this question, they said, they wrote me, they said, well, I'm cooking and cleaning and doing things in the house, and da da so I don't have any time to, like, work in the mornings. I don't have any time to work in the evenings or whatever. And um, so, um... Uh, so basically, I know, the reason I'm a, bit I'm a bit embarrassed to be addressing this question is because I'm sure that these women, I'm sure that they have houses that are quite a bit, you know, cleaner than my own. I'm sure that their kids are, kids and husband are eating a quite a, like a quite a bit more, much, much more diverse menu than I'm serving my own family. Um, so, but I feel like maybe I do have something to, you know, to, to help, uh, like, maybe I could a bit help uh, moms who are trying to find a way um, to like make some time, for, some time for themselves, like to express themselves creatively or in other ways uh, through the day. So I think that. So I would like to say. Um, I w so so I'll tell you like what's worked for me, like how I how I'm able to make this time. Um, and basically, over the past 13 years, I've been a stay-at-home mom, and I've been consistently I've been keeping these three hours, uh, like to do or create or do do my stuff. Um, and so I just wanted to talk with you about that and tell, tell you what's worked for me and take it with a grain of salt. Maybe, maybe some things will work for you, some things won't work for you. Um, but these are maybe out yeah, of this list of, so maybe you'll hear something that will help you. Okay? So um, the first thing is that I have a very, like, the big reason why I'm able to set aside these three hours a day is because I believe with all of my heart that if mom ain't happy, nobody's happy. If I'm not happy and I'm not thriving, um, then I know and I feel like, you know, if I'm not taking care of myself and like, you know, doing this, these fun things for myself, like my fun creative projects that are so important to me, I know that my whole family is going to suffer. Um, I know that my, my teacher, Rebani Yemima Mizrafi, so she told us several years ago, she said like a mother who doesn't have a, have a drawer in her life, like a drawer that, that's locked with the key for herself, that no one can, no one can touch that time and no one can touch that time for herself. Um, then, that, then that mother is not going to have anything to give to anybody else, okay? So basically, if I want to be a person, like if I want to spend the rest of my day, you know, you know, helping my husband, helping my kids, and being with them, being a good mom, being a good wife, and being a good member of the community, then I must, must, must have a certain amount of time for myself, you know, during the week, okay? And I would think, I would think, you know, optimally every day, okay? So basically, I believe that this time, these three hours, are kadosh. They are holy. Nothing, like over the past 13 years, I could probably count on two hands <laughs> the amount of times that I've given up one of these mornings to do anything else. Um, I, do not do, I do not allow myself to do housework during that time. I do not allow myself to cook during that time. I do not answer the phone during this time. You know, I am just, I don't answer the door. People ring the door. I don't answer the door. You know, I know, like I can see from caller ID if it's one of my kids' schools or it's my husband, and you know, then I answer. But otherwise, I just do not answer the phone. I can, I, I'll, I'll get back to people later. Because um, I feel like this is kadosh. This is my whole, this is my important time for me. Okay? And I think, like, if I, had a, if I had a job outside of the house, you know, let's say I was working in an office, you know, I wouldn't be home. I wouldn't be home to answer the phone. I wouldn't be home to do housework. And, and, that's, and, that's, and, that's, and that's how I act. I act as though I'm out of the house, let's say. Okay? Um, so, um, uh, so, so about, about cleaning, so then you say, well, when do I clean and when do I cook? Um, so the first thing is that cooking, what I do is um, every Sunday night, I take about an hour and a half or two, and I cook for the whole week. I cook a huge soup. I cook a huge, like, grain, or like, my kids like rice or couscous, like a big thing of that, big batch of that. Um, I make a big thing of another dish. Um, for the past few weeks, it's been some kind of pasta with some sort of like sautéed vegetables on it. That could also be like tofu or some kind of big meat thing, if you whatever. Um, and um, and so and so that is what I cook during the week. I have done my job. That is what my kids are eating. Basically, and, uh, basically that is what my kids are eating the whole week. Okay, <laughs> so. Um, uh, and the truth is that my kids like it, and I guess like you have to figure out what your kids like. My kids love soup. Strangely enough, my kids love vegetable soup. Like that's their favorite food. So, but if you need to find like what your kids love to eat and what your husband likes to eat, and um, uh, and and that's, and 
that's really worked for me. So basically, after that, I feel like I am done. I don't. I do not do any any cooking or preparation at all for the rest of the week. Okay, so that really saves a lot of time, that, and, that, and that enables me then to have my mornings to work on my projects. So also, a lot of a lot of mothers, uh, a bunch of these mothers told me that they're also cleaning in the morning. So when do I clean? I clean late at night. Okay, I clean late at night, um, and I, I clean up. I clean pretty late at night, um, like after my kids are asleep. Um, and, um, and my husband's gone out, like wherever he's going, to, my husband teaches at night, or um, he also learns at night. So when I have the house all to myself, I listen to my classes, I listen to my Rabbi Niven class, my Dina Friedman parenting class, or the Chazak hotline or something, and I love it. This is one of my favorite times of the day. It, I used to like detest, detest cleaning, and now really I actually enjoy it. I enjoy it because it's my time that I listen to my, to my fun classes. Maybe for you, maybe you'll enjoy like listening to music or talking with a friend. Um, and uh, and that's and so basically I do it at night, late at night. So you might ask, well, I'm you know I aren't I exhausted? I must be exhausted by you know by the night time. So let me explain to you why I'm not exhausted by the night time. So I stay up quite late, um, and then when my um, when my when my kids wake up in the morning, my kids I have to get up at six thirty in the morning to get my kids out. After I get everybody out of the house, it takes me like a few hours, but I come back to the house and I go back to sleep. I, I lie down for 20 minutes. Okay, before I, before I do any of my work or anything, it's like a mandatory 20 minute resting on this sofa. <laughs> um, and in addition to that, in the afternoon, um, basically my little kids come home, and then before my big kids come home from school, um, I rest again. I rest again for between half an hour and 45 minutes. Um, and over again, over the past 13 years, I have never ever missed a resting one of these nap periods. Okay, it's not actually napping because actually, like, I'm sort of taking care of kids at that time. Um, but um, but basically, I'm on the sofa and I'm off duty and I'm just like resting and my eyes are closed and I'm listening and I don't actually fall asleep. But it's very very relaxing um, and um, and it, 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 it's what keeps me going. It means that then, like, I have it's sort of I, I find it very very important uh, to have that way. To break up my afternoon with the kids. Um, otherwise, it's just a really long afternoon between like 1:30 and you know and seven when the little kids go to bed. It's just too long for me. So this is like a break, and um, because it also most importantly gives me the energy to clean and cook, you know, late at night, so that after my kids go to bed, so that I can have my mornings to work on my projects. Um, the the next thing is um, my kids. All of my school age children are required to do a job. They kind of know what we call mifzaim, a mifzah. So basically, so what is a job? A job is every child who's school age must do something to help around in the house for 10 minutes a day. So this actually is really, you know, it sounds like a little bit, but actually it's significant. I have four school age children, so it means I'm getting 40 minutes of help a day. Um, and just if I, I've heard from a bunch of mothers like that their kids don't help at all, like how do you get kids to help in the house? Um, and I'll just tell you, for the first year when my kids started helping, um, it was a, it was a, just basically a fight, like what do you call it, tooth and nail fight every single day. But I stuck with it, and basically I was very strict with them and said that they had to do something. They had to do something in the house, um, and um, I give them like specific jobs that they could choose from. And then at the end of the, at the end of doing their job, then um, then my kids they don't get any any treats during the week except except when they finish their job, okay? So, so basically my kids basically, so initially I was like forcing them, forcing them, it was hard for like a year, um, and maybe about, I don't know, six or seven years ago, um, and, then, and then when they're done, then they were allowed their one treat or sweet or anything, they're not allowed cookies, anything sweet, they're not allowed until they finish their job. And when they finish their job, then they get like a small treat, okay? So, um, so basically, you know, that was six years ago, and now, like for the last few years, it's just now, like it basically runs itself. My kids just know that's part of the routine in the house. There's no fighting involved. They ask me, they ask me what what jobs I suggest, um, and um, and usually I say dishes or putting away laundry, and they're like, eh, I don't want to. And then, but then I say, okay, like then you can do, you can do, um, you can do ten minutes something else. You can find find what you want to do, and then like they'll clean up their room, they'll clean up the hallway. Um, they'll vacuum. They'll do some, something that they enjoy. Um, so, um, so that basically, I think that's important. If you have kids who are get, who are in school age, um, or even maybe kindergarten, start getting them used to this idea that they are helping in the house. Okay, I think it's really, really important. It's also important for them. It's not only helpful to us. It's helpful for them to feel 
And it's incredibly important for them to feel like they like we're a unit, like we're working together, like we are a family together and we are helping to keep this house going, okay? Um, the next thing is, um, I think that, um, I think that, uh, like, uh, I, for the, for maybe for the past 11 years or so, I've had a clean lady. And I think that this is a necessity, okay? Some people think of it as, some people think of it as, as a luxury. I think having, having a clean lady at least once a week, and if you have younger kids, you don't have any help from older children, I think this is, I think it's a necessity, maybe even twice a week, maybe even three times a week. Um, and... Um, a lot of people think this is a luxury and like they can't afford it, but um, I think that this is the kind of thing like especially, especially if you have very small children, you don't have any help from any help from older children. Um, I think that this is something that's like it's just like a necessity to maintain your sanity. You must have someone who's gonna like really get your house to, like a real like what I feel like you really really get my house to a really really clean point once a week, and then basically the rest of the week I'm sort of like doing what I'm like sort of like keep getting it back to that, um, but it, it's much, much easier than that. It's basically having someone to that, that really, really thorough cleaning once a week. Um, so uh, I, I, once, I once knew someone, I got a call from a young mother who was totally overwhelmed. She had, I think, three children under the age of three, and it was incredibly difficult, and she was really, really struggling. Um, and I said this thing to her about, like, how, well, you, you should get a cleaning lady. And she said, oh, we don't have any, any money. We don't have any money. We don't have any money. So then, like, over the course of the conversation, it comes out that this woman, um, that, that she and her husband have $200,000 saved up to buy a house. Um, houses in Jerusalem are very expensive. So, um, so, and I was like, so this, that, like, that, that really struck me. I was like, okay, she has $200,000, and I understand her, like, she has her savings, she doesn't want to go into her savings. But I think that this is, what, what mothers of young children need to understand, that this is, like, the emergency time, like, this is the time of difficulty. Like, things will get easier, like, I see with my life. Over the last few years, my, my life has gotten so much easier because I have older children. I have older children to help with cleaning. I have older children to help with younger children. I have older children so I don't have to hire babysitters who can watch like the younger children. Like my life is so much easier than it was, you know, five year, even five years ago. Um, and so if you are in this stage where like you don't have any help from older children, I would really, really recommend to you to, uh, to like to dig into your savings, to, to dig into your savings, to borrow money from wherever you need to borrow because this is the difficult time. It's not going to be this way forever. Right now, it's the difficult time. It's when you need help. Okay. Um, and the final thing I want to say is that um, is that is that I believe that my happiness is worth paying money. So like I said, like you know this thing about the cleaning ladies, like I think that's worth it. Um, you know to have like when I was younger, like to have like a babysitter come in and help me sometimes. I think that that's worth it. And money, money that I spend on my classes, on the Dina Friedman class, Rabbi Niven, or various classes that I, that I do that, 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 that enable me to, in, to love my cleaning, I think that that's worth it. I think that my happiness, you know, even though I'm not making a salary, I think that that's, I think that that's, um, that that's really an important thing uh, to, you know, to spend money on. Um, so, um, okay. So I just want to bless all of you. I really, I think it's so, so, so important that every mom, you know, that, um, you know, it's wonderful, like, taking, you know, taking care of our kids and taking care of our families and taking care of our homes. And I think that that is, like, that that's, like, the most important thing that you can do. Um, but I think that I believe very, very strongly that every, every mother has a personal yud. It's a personal mission in life. It's something that, something that brings you tremendous vitality. And for me, that's working on my blog and making these pep talks and doing my writing and doing my various things. And for you, it's something else because everyone has like a unique project that, that just brings them alive. Um, and I just, I, I think that it's so important. It's so, so important. I want to bless all of you moms that you'll be able to figure out what is that thing that can, that can, that can bring like real vitality and simcha to your life as a mom. And that, and that you'll be able to find the ability um, to, to make time for that and make that something that, that's really, really a priority and do it every single week and, and I hope every single day. Okay, I want to bless all of you with an amazing, amazing week.